Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Shivani Sharda, Assistant Professor at Amity Institute of Biotechnology, Amity University, Noida. Here I am going to talk about the module that caters to the high throughput technology that has become the vital part of biological analysis. DNA arrays or DNA microarray unfolds a promise of transforming biological sciences by providing new vistas of complex biological systems. At the basic level, DNA arrays provide a snapshot of all the genes that are expressed in a cell at a given particular time. The topics that are covered under the module deals with comprehending how microarray has developed as a technology for gene level studies, explain the different types of array production and the technical aspects, explain the process of acquiring data and biological interpretation in microarray, and then finally to demarcate the DNA microarray as a technology and its applications in genotyping and gene expression analysis. At the outset, let's introduce the technology as per its concept map. The microchip technology is a high throughput process linked to the biological sample analysis or the biological sample interpretation. As is clearly evident, biological query forms the basis towards understanding the molecular detailing, which is dependent upon a very good experimental design. You can understand that microarray follows biological query, which is interpreted through by experimental design, which is performed by microarray experimentation. The experimentation involves normalization by doing image analysis. The image analysis is undertaken to perform the quality assessment. After the quality assessment, you can either undertake normalization steps or you might have to repeat the experiment if the quality assessment of the experiment fails. The analysis part of microarray deals with estimations, filtering, clustering and discrimination of data. The data interpretations could be done through functional enrichments or through pathway analysis. The biological verifications are enhanced by using alternate technologies like real-time or MS technologies. Next we come to have information about what are the microarrays. By its literal meaning, microarray means they are microscopic slides containing an ordered series of biomolecules or an array. The ordered series could have biomolecules likewise of DNA, RNA, protein and tissue, captured and probed for various activities. The number of ordered samples can run from hundreds to thousands, so that the data obtained from microarray can be traced back to the samples. Microarray types depends upon the material that is placed on the slide. For DNA, it is called the DNA microarray. If we are using RNA, it is called RNA microarray, which is more or less now converted to cDNA microarray. If our primary source of material placed on the slide is protein, then it is called protein microarray, which has specific subtypes depending upon whether we are using antigens, antibodies or epitopes. When we are using tissues or cells, they are called tissue microarray. The first step of manufacturing of microarray slides involves the chemical modification of the slide substrate using reactive groups that are preferably as aldehydes or primary amines for stabilizing the DNA onto the slide, either by covalent bonds or by electrostatic in interactions. DNA can be synthesized directly onto the slide itself by a photolithographic process. We have introduced that all these features are going to be high signal intensities and good features that would introduce a good signal to noise ratio that could have ambient analytical conditions. When next we come to the molecular basis of microarray technique, when we talk about the central dogma of molecular biology, we understand that from DNA, a single-stranded messenger RNA is transcribed, which is translated later into a protein. The steps that are involved include the transcription, translation, 
as well as then the folding of the protein to have physiologically important metabolites. Now microarrays are based on the ability to have complementation of strands either DNA or RNA aka cDNA to hybridize to one another with high specificity. The evolution of microparameters transforms from a typical clinical study to a typical genomic study. When we compare macroarraying versus microarraying, the typical clinical study as is invariably seen in the slide says that the number of variables run from tens to hundreds, whereas the use of around thousand to lakh of cases are required to perform a perfect clinical study. Whereas a typical genomic study, the number of variables can range from 10,000 to 1 lakh and the number of cases required would be only from tens to hundreds. So that is the reason we perform microarray experiments to solve varied biological queries to which the answers are to be found in the realm of hundreds and thousands or an entire genome of individual genes. These experiments generate massive amount of data which resolve many molecular queries all in one go. Microarrays become the integrated technology platform. They combine genomics, silicon chip manufacturing, DNA and protein coupling chemistries, signal and image processing intensities, biostatistics, software skills and miniaturized versions of traditional molecular biology experiments. There is a need to develop new software to analyze the results of many possible experiments. Microarrays gives you a complete snapshot of gene expression at the genome level to understand the comprehensive quantitative view of the entire genome or the transcriptome. So rather than having individual experiments as performed in other biochemical studies, microarray follows an integrated system which is a need for functional genomics. The understanding of microarray analysis is usually because of the bioinformatics and the omics sciences that amalgamate to generate profiles which are transcript profiles, genotypic profile, proteome profiles or metabolomic profiles. As well as we can have information on the interectomic versions where genome level interactions of DNA and protein, protein and protein can be demarcated. When it comes to high throughput screening, we can understand the quantitative analysis of the phenotypic variations that are happening at the gene expression levels. According to uh, the slide number 12, we understand that the high throughput platform that is utilized in microarray for functional genomics actually complies that complicated biological processes deciphered through genomic studies enlighten the network of molecules working together, a technique that is devised to sketch the complete picture of the functional aspects of a cell or a tissue under surveillance. The high throughput parameters that are associated with microarray are that, they, that it's a binding assay. It has high sensitivity because we are using highly specific fluorescent or radioactive labeling probes. Microarray is a parallel process which means that it allows the detection of thousands of genes simultaneously. It is a miniaturized version of a normal hybridization platform as we can see in the technical strategy. The automation actually reduces the amount of human interventions and we rely on computer aids to involve the microchip analysis. Microanalysis is also considered as a multiplex platform where multiple samples or experiments are performed at the same time. The quantitative analysis of data using microarray analysis is going to give more amount of reliable and versatile information that is available to date. 
the next slide gives you the experimental workflow and the technical strategy behind microarray. Microarray is a grid of DNA spots on a substrate that is used to detect the complementary sequences applied as hybridization extracts. DNA spots can be deposited by various methods which are contact based or non-contact based method. For example, piezoelectric or inkjet style printing, photolithography which involves the photolithographic masked nucleotides to be deposited in situ on the chip and maskless deposition. The substrate that can be utilized for making the microchips can be plastic, glass or silicon. DNA or RNA of interest is labeled and hybridized with the array. Hybridization with probes is then detected optically. So basically it is a high throughput process of the traditional hybridization experimentation that involves the chip manufacture, making of the array platform, then utilizing this array platform to hybridize that is detected by microarray scanners and the image is analyzed using various technologies. Now when we talk about high throughput analysis, the experimentation involves in microarray spotting or fabrication of substrates likewise of nylon, glass or silicon. The biological samples in the arrays or in the silicon chips or the glass slides can be deposited by using two different varied methods. The printing of chips include the pre-synthesized oligonucleotides wherein already pre-ordered oligonucleotide primers are deposited onto the slides. The other method include the in-situ chip manufacturing where the labeled DNA primers are added on the chip itself. Then these chips are scanned after hybridization using laser beams which are demarcated according to the fluorescent labels that are utilized in the gene level probes. These are called the experimental features ACA spots which extensively understand the genome level expression or the genome level sequencing which is conducted on these chips. The arrayers conclude that they are a set of capillary pins or pens to deposit nanoliter volumes of samples at high density onto the coated plates. The array scanner which is utilized after hybridization contains a proprietary lens that keeps moving the laser beams at sharp focus at all points on the slide. The emitted fluorescence passes through the filters through a photomultiplier tube. The emission spectra of the cyanine dyes that are utilized for microarray analysis. We can observe that they have very crisp spectra as per the emission and absorption levels. The coated slides are seen on the right hand side panel whereas the automated slide processor which is utilized for hybridization as well as for scanning is seen on the left corner of the slide. Next we come to the technology platform detailing we can see that there are two methods the spotted or the pre-synthesized glass slide arrays and the in situ oligonucleotide arrays. The left photographs tells you the different types of small molecules, peptides, proteins or DNA that could be labeled onto the chips. The common probes that are utilized are the cDNA or the oligonucleotides. The spotted DNA arrays are chemically synthesized or made by PCR and then mechanically spotted on the array. The amount of the spot can vary according to the technology platform. Method is more flexible and less expensive. The probe length is from 60 base pairs to entire cDNA clones. DNA is deposited by printing using robotically controlled fine tipped pins. The in situ manufactured can be done by photolithography, a technology that has been taken over by the famous company Ephimetrix. 
this is more consistent and shorter oligonucleotides are used for the array printing. The pre-synthesized oligonucleotide probes machine and the robot that is printing 100 slides <coughs> at 74 plates which are 384 wells, 48 print tip version. There are multiple substrate that could be labeled which are using amines, aldehydes, polyl lysines, thylol. The multiple labeling options include the various fluorescent dyes. The gene machines that are utilized here are usually doing the spotted microarray presentation whereas the on spot or the in situ manufacture happens by using mass nucleotides which are demasked using photolithographic technologies. A spotted two channel array that have been utilized to understand the general difference of a standard mock uh, series of cells which are HeLa cells as well as the adenovirus infected cells from where the total RNA has been extracted, the reverse transcription has generated the cDNA which has been labeled by two different dyes, the CY3 and the CY5. The CY3 is the green color dye whereas the CY5 is the red color dye. After the scanning, the RNA samples are read by using two times the laser beam, first the CY3 then followed by CY5. These images that are generated through co uh, the computer are then overlaid onto each other to generate the final data. The in-situ oligonucleotide arrays which are including the parallel synthesis of oligonucleotide probes using a photolithographic methods. This introduces a lot of diversity by involving millions of probes on the microarray. Multiple probes per genes could be generated and usually these arrays are the one color arrays. We go into the details of Affymetrix by seeing the Affymetrix gene chip probes on the next slide. The gene chip probes has the magnified views where the DNA strands are bound and they are built as per in each spot. There are millions of DNA strands per spot. And when the sample is coming and labeling, they try to find the complementary sequences onto the labeled probes. The final slide on laser irradiation leaves us with the signal of fluorescence that is coming from the labeled probes and the hybridized sample. As we have understood that gene expression analysis performs is the major achievement of DNA microarray, we would understand that there is a requirement of RNA analysis and RNA isolation. The isolation from RNA could be from tissue specificity. Then we come to the labeling and purification of the labeled products. The labeling of RNA involves three different ways. One is the direct labeling which is achieved by using reverse transcriptase to produce cDNA and then incorporate the fluorescent labels. Most commonly used dyes are CY3 and CY5, the CY indicating cyanin. Other fluorophores that are available are CY3.5, Tamara and Texas Red. The second way of doing the labeling is the indirect labeling where a reactive group, usually a primary amine, is incorporated in the cDNA first and then the cyanin dyes are coupled to the cDNA in a separate reaction. The main advantage of this indirect labeling efficiency is to have higher efficiency and incorporation of smaller molecules during the reverse transcription step. The third way is to have free incorporated nucleotides to be removed. Now when you are doing this you can purify this whole labeled product by using column chromatography or using ethanol precipitation of the samples. Now we come to the second most important part of the experiment which is hybridization. The hybridization involves hybridization buffer, the standard is sodium citrate, non-specific DNA blocking usually done by bovine serum albumin or Denhardt's reagent. 
The hybridization temperatures that are utilized in, in experimentation are around 15 to 20 degrees centigrade below the melting temperature, which, is, which comes up to 42 to 45 degrees centigrade for PCI products. And for longer oligos, you need to have a bit more 5 degree increment in the hybridization temperature. Hybridization time can be from few hours to generate reproducible results to overnight hybridizations which are commonly ascertained to undertake initial experimentation. The hybridization of the slide is followed by scanning. The scanners that are used in microarrays are usually linked to photomultiplier tubes or confocal microscopes which use laser at exciting wavelengths specifically for the dyes that are utilized here, that is CY3 and CY5. The scanner excites the fluorescent dyes present at each spot on the microarray and then the dye emits a characteristic wavelength that is captured in a photomultiplier tube. The amount of signal emitted is directly proportional to the amount of dye at the spot on the microarray and these values are obtained and quantitated on a scanner. This is the basic protocol that is followed in experimentation and finally there is a reconstruction of the signals that are located to each location or the experimental features on a microchip slide. For cDNA microarrays, the intensity values are generated for CY3 and CY5 producing two color data. The process now finally involves building of the chip that involves massive PCR reactions, PCR purifications and then printing the slides by preparation of slides and then post processing. Side by side we can see that RNA preparation of the biological sample is done by purification of RNA, isolation and cDNA production as well as labeling. Hybridization of the chip involves the probe labeling and then hybridization followed by the data analysis. The data analysis involves the image analysis that is undertaken after the RGB overlay of the CY3 and CY5 images. As we can see a nice image that is demarcated by the dual channel array. Following that, we can understand the qualitative interpretation of the reads, where the green represents high control hybridization, the red represents high sample hybridization, the yellow represents a combination of control and sample where both have hybridized equally. Black spots represent the areas where neither the control nor the sample is hybridized. Now coming to the qualitative interpretation of the reads, we have to understand how to quantify the amount of color that is achieved after the overlay, meaning how green is the green, what is the ratio of the signal to the background, how to compare multiple experiments using different chips and how to quantify cross hybridization, if any. If we understand the life cycle of microarray as a technology or a technique, we understand that we began with a biological question leading to our estimations of sample preparation as well as chip manufacturing followed by microarray reaction and then microarray detection and the final step involves data analysis and modeling. Conceptual approach of the technology involves how the array is analyzed, how the array is placed how the analysis of biological interpretation is done, what are the different types of applications, the different ways of adding technology that are present nowadays. So we go ahead and understand the data analysis from here on. The data analysis involves the normalization which in includes that the Meyer gene expression in any experiment is the true gene expression but there are contributions that are coming from many sources of variability. The normalization 
depends upon how the sources of variability have been tackled by putting lot of controls during the experimentation. The high throughput experimentation in microarray data is uh, detailed for introducing normalization because high throughput data leads to high amount of data variability. The normalization process is directed at reasoning about and resolving the systematic errors and bias that are introduced by microarray experimental platforms. The levels of variability measured in a gene expression of a feature or an experiment is at the highest scale controlled by the biological variability in the population of the samples. As well as at the experimental scale, the variability is between the preparations and labeling of the sample, the hybridization of the sample to different arrays and the signal on the replicate features of the same array. The overall aim to achieve the quantification of the Mayed calculated variability is to have a complete differential analysis of the genes. The normalization aims to understand the features as biological significant uh, analysis or interpretations. All the normalization processes are involved because raw data that is catering to the messenger RNA concentrations which are through the analysis of the fluorescent probes could be contaminated by tissues due to RNA degradation. There are differences in the amplification efficiency of the PCR product. There are differences in the high refer transcription efficiency hybridization efficiency as well as specificity of the probe and the target, clone identification and mapping, there could be differences in the PCR yield, then there could be spotting efficiency which are the technical efficiencies which could include the D DNA support binding, manufacturing related issues, then accordingly the image segmentation, signal quantification as well as background correction. All these kinds of biological and technical difficulties lead to normalization to be performed on each experiment in microarray. When we are talking of normalization, the first step for normalization is image segmentation and analysis. The image is analyzed for its uh, quality and then assessed whether the experiment has been done in a perfect manner or not. The image segmentation involves gridding of the image by using virtual grids which would have different types of methodologies which include uh, specific image segmentation, variable image segmentation or edge detection algorithms. When we are coming to microarray analysis, we understand this image pre-processing is a requirement to and involved data pre-processing. The objective for data pre-processing is to convert the image of thousands of signals to values for each gene or probe set. This involves multiple steps which are beginning through image analysis, background correction and noise abstraction and then understanding and estimating the expression value for a gene or probe set and background noise usually is done by the proprietary software. The quality control of the slides are usually done at the probe level, at the array level and at the gene level. The quality at the probe level is assessed by mirroring the expression of one spot on a particular array. The quality at the array level is usually done to estimate the quality of expression on a particular glass slide and at the gene level at the quality of expression measurement of one probe across all arrays. The probe level quality control means we are looking for individual spots printed on the slide and the sources of variability could be faulty printing, uneven distribution, contamination with debris, magnitude of signal relative to noise and poorly mired spots. 
The visual inspection is also giving us the information whether there is any kind of environmental contamination, likewise of hair, dust, scratches, air bubbles or any other regions with haze. We estimate the spot quality by its brightness, uniformity, morphology and spot size. Now we estimate how to undertake normalization using various values. There are procedures where missing values are estimated and then normalization is performed by either the local or the global scales. We have understood that the microarray experimentation is having substantial amount of problems that involve array fabrication defects, problem with RNA extraction, failed labeling reactions, poor hybridization conditions or faulty scanners. There are biological and technical problems that has to be catered so as normalization becomes the most important and integral part of understanding DNA microarrays. The quality measurements would include whether we would go ahead with our data analysis which include the gene level control, the probe level control and the array level control. Normalization corrects for the variation in hybridization and the assumption that it takes that there is no change in the global gene expression. Without normalization, the intensity values of the various chips would be so varied that a generalized information for the biological interpretation would not be easily available. We understand that the streamline analysis of microarray data involves the processing of raw data to normalize and then filter the normalized data sets for significance for classification as well as clustering to understand the genome function or the gene networks so that we can do functional analysis or network analysis. Finally, we conclude that microarray has various applications in the fields of transcriptomics, genomic analysis, metabolomics, systems biology, pharmacogenomics, proteomics and the biggest application being gene expression analysis. After we have understood the basis of microchip technology, we want to understand or summarize what can be measured using microarrays. Microarrays majorly are used for messenger RNA expressed by a gene, gene expression analysis array, an exon array or a tiling array. Then the amount of messenger RNA expressed by exon exon array or tiling array could be measured. Amount of messenger RNA expressed by a region of DNA in tiling array could be directly measured. Or we can actually assume through exon array what kind of DNA strand is expressed and which kind of several uh, similar DNA sequences are present in the genome using SNP array. We can also measure the copies of a gene that are present in a genome using gene expression microarray, exon array or tiling array. Or even to understand a known protein is bound to DNA using the chip chip technology or the promoter array. Finally, we conclude our information by understanding the research applications of microarray. Microarrays have been easily utilized for comparative genomic hybridization in the functional genomics platform, gene expression profiling, which could include the differential gene expression between two or more sample types, or processing for gene expression profiles to assign the biological functions to genes, or group of genes, as well as the gene interactions. We can also estimate the similar gene expression across treatments. Sequences of genes in a sample commonly termed as mini sequencing for short nucleotide reads and mutations using SNP analysis is also one of the major applications of microarray. Identification of marker genes associated with clinical outcomes has been relevantly used in biomedical applications for microarray. 
then we can conclude our information that molecular genomic analysis which is the basis of uh, mapping the cellular, regional or tissue specific localization of genes and their respectively encoded proteins are the major application that is being encountered nowadays in the research. Pharmacological studies to study the mechanism of action of therapeutic agents and to develop new drug targets by using molecular diagnostics, biomarker discovery and the diagnosis, prognosis and therapeutic of relevant diseases. Now the gene expression microarray technologies have been categorized finally as gene expression profiling that monitors the expression level of thousands of genes simultaneously. There are common applications which we have understood as array CGH, comparative genome hybridization, assessing genome content in different cells or closely related organisms, SNP arrays or single nucleotide polymorphism arrays which are understood to undertake the nucleotide specificity in different disease platforms, identifying single nucleotide platforms between alleles or between populations. Chip on chip analysis which is chromatin immunoprecipitation performed on microchips to determine the protein binding site occupancy throughout the genome. Then there are varied arrays which are used for the epigenetic analysis for example the methylation arrays that would in immunoprecipitate methylated DNA and determine which regions of DNA are methylated in the epigenetic regions of the genes. Thanks for uh, understanding the module and please visit the EPG website for other modules and related documents that are available with the module.